I was just in one of the cold email groups that are on WhatsApp, the ones that are top secret, the not paid communities, where people talk about cold email at the highest levels. And people are really worried about how things are changing. People are worried about spam filters. They're worried about Google now moving people off of the platform. People are getting banned now from Google Workspace, exactly as I predicted a little while ago. What do we do? Is cold email dead in 2023? Are we going to have to use something else in 2024? The problem is a lot of spammers have taken over the platform. What used to be a fun little thing where you would write a personalized message to somebody you want to work with and then work with them has now been taken over by these tools that make it very easy to send thousands or tens of thousands of email messages out to everybody without personalizing, without doing all this stuff. What do we do? What am I personally doing right now to grow my businesses? And how is that different than how I approached it a few years ago when I wrote the cold email manifesto? The main thing that I'm doing differently with Galadon versus any other SaaS is I'm focusing on inbound marketing first, meaning the standard build the email list, then pitch them on the product type of marketing that used to be so popular before cold email took over the space. That's what I'm using now. I'm using AI lead magnets, which are things like the AI proposal that you can see at alexberman.com slash proposal AI and things like that that will drive people to put their emails on our list and then sign up for the product. If you want, I can do an outline of everything I'm doing on Galadon, by the way. If you want to see that, the exact email scripts that I'm using to pitch people, the exact lead magnets, the exact giveaways, everything that I'm doing there. Because honestly, I would love to share it with you. It's just a little outside the realm of the cold email space. So that's number one. We're using lead magnets and we're using list building. The second thing we're doing, it's Halloween, that's why I've got this spooky cup here. The second thing we're doing is using virality, which is a strategy that I didn't know I could use until our other family channel, Town, started going viral. We got from zero to 70,000 subscribers on our Town Instagram just by making content that would go viral. And so now I'm taking that same approach and putting it into Galadon. I'm making shorts that are better. If you guys have noticed, if I can just judge by the number of views. The Galadon shorts where I'm talking about AI are doing better than the previous shorts that we had on this channel. And I'm creating better content that is now being picked up by the algorithms. And I'm posting it on all social media platforms, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, even on TikTok. My TikTok's back in action. And the biggest thing that I realized when it comes to creating viral content, it's not studying the other viral content creators. It's not doing all the BS that they pitch you on here. It just is the mindset of virality, right? If you go back or if I go back and look at my past shorts that have been running on this channel, they were clips from our YouTube videos and nothing really did well. The best short we ever did was a cold email script where I just presented the script that made us millions of dollars, whatever, same script from the cold email manifesto book. And that got around 100,000 views on shorts. That was the best short we've ever done. That was a short that was created to be a short. There was no repurposing. There was none of that. Going forward, I'm against repurposing of content. I want to create new content for shorts and new content for longs. And I'm also moving off of cold email. I'm still using cold email. Don't get me wrong. Cold emails are still being sent for Galadon. I just queued up two campaigns yesterday. One was to Squarespace website users, because if they're using Squarespace, they can use Galadon and that would be good. And then the other one was to influencers to pitch them on free Galadon seats in exchange for a review. The second campaign, of course, is doing a lot better than the first because the second campaign always does better. Offering free stuff and pitching to influencers always does better. And so as we move into 2024, I'm focusing a lot more on inbound, a lot more on content creation, and a lot more on delivering value to users rather than just pitching cold email directly. And if we do that, then we can get more and more responses to our cold emails when they're used. For example, when we pitch a influencer and I can say that this gallon on content's doing better on my 110,000 subscriber YouTube channel, now the influencer is going to pay attention and read the email versus somebody who doesn't have that content, doesn't have that case study to fall back on. They're not going to get the same responses. This campaign could be wildly successful. I'm ready in negotiation with a bunch of them, and I think they're going to be able to do this content for free. That's the best use of cold email that I've found, the most effective use of cold email that I've found so far in 2023, using cold email to open up partnerships, things like that. And I even remember the email 10K strategy was asking partners to share their case studies so that you could sell on their behalf. That still works very well. Think about how you can move your cold email strategy from direct asks 
to leveraging other people's platforms and you should be very successful in 2024. What questions do you have about content? What questions do you have about growing a SaaS? What questions do you have about cold email or statements? Let me know down below in the comments. We really wanna get comments and we wanna get engagement so that we can continue doing this and we stay hyped about this channel, you know what I'm saying? Let me talk to you soon. I'm gonna go for now and I'll see you in a couple days. Thanks for watching, I'm Alex Berman.